Welcome to You Don't Know Ball. Today we're going to be talking with Austin, who is kind of an insider scoop guy on Twitter, uh, Bears fan as well. If you don't know Ball and want to know Ball, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, let us know in the comments what you think the Bears should do at nine. Austin, I'm just going to start out with asking how you kind of got into just like the scoop stuff. I know I found you around the time of free agency because I'm a degenerate when it comes to NFL news. I follow all the fake accounts that tweet out bullshit, but it's just I just like to live <laughs> yeah. in like the excitement of the off season. So yeah yeah i appreciate it thanks for having me on uh it's been like great interacting with you too for the last month couple weeks um and looking forward to, to doing so moving forward but um yeah ultimately like i had a a buddy of mine and, and i kind of like taking it way back kind of started a couple of networks of ours like sports networks and in college we actually like grew them decently um and then merged with another uh, network that's actually still running unbelievably today. We just talked about this the other day, but he actually lucked into a really uh, good job that uh, works very closely with some top insiders. So it's, it's pretty cool. Like you kind of like luck into things like this. Sometimes a lot of the people out there who aren't like your Schefter's and Rappaport's like they have network, they have people that they just are friends with or grew up with or whatever that, you know, lucked into some really good jobs and, and they kind of like pass info to them. So they, that, that info like we kind of just like share info like that and then um get it out and it's it's really cool to see how that over time and we've been doing this for like i don't know three four years now and it's really cool to see how um that actual that industry actually works and like you know what what sources we feel are actually legit and what are kind of like oh these are more like hey this person's just kind of like gut feeling this it's not really something coming from like a true source so it's pretty fascinating to see and then Obviously, when you put it out in the open, it's like, you know, you, you're kind of like putting your balls on the table. Um, you're, you know, you, you get you get hate all across tons of people. And like, it's funny because like, you know, I and like you see this, like, especially with free agency, which was, you know, we again, we've been doing this for a couple of years. But I think free agency, you know, when we started dropping scoops, it was like one after the other, after the other, after the other. It's it really cool to like see uh, for that stretch, that short stretch to see everything work. And even after that you'd still tweet something. I'd still tweet something out and still get hate from people. It's just that, that one that you might get wrong or that one that hasn't been confirmed yet. Like you always get hate for it. So it's, it's very interesting um, to see how that interaction works. And like, you kind of just, you know, you kind of just like laugh off Twitter. I don't really take it too seriously, but it's like a fun little side gig to do with uh, my buddy and I. Yeah. I mean, I, once I saw you got like most of the coach firings, right. Before there was even talks of like certain things. Yeah. And of course, like a... Yeah, yeah, of course, Flus was the one <laughs> yeah. that didn't go. I'm yeah. praying that was not a mistake. But yeah, yeah, no, I always found that funny. The people who like were like, oh, you don't have sources. I'm like, okay, like regardless if he does or not, how was he correct on this? And also, even if he missed, so what? There's people that yeah. have tons of followers that miss. I mean, it, things change all the time in the league. Yeah, and, it's very you know. fluid. People don't get that. Schefter and Raff miss all the time. I mean, yeah. Schefter got, like, screwed last year, I think, by Rodgers or somebody because Schefter was putting out, like, BS yeah. uh, source stuff. So, I mean, everybody does it. It's, it's the name of the game. If you're going to tweet out inside info, you just have to know that that's what's going to happen. Um, it's super fluid. I mean, things change all the time. So as you mentioned, it, it's, it's, it's very hard to like really nail stuff if you're not one of the big names. So, I mean, I'm willing to bet that the people that are hating are also following like NFL noties and shit like that. So, yeah, probably. You know, probably. um, but yeah, so Breaking rumors. Oh, bro. I, I love them. I, I sent them to my group chat and my friends are just like, please stop sending these. But um, yeah, no. So are you trying to just, do you just enjoy doing it for fun? Are you trying to kind of like make it a little bit more serious, like as things go forward and as you grow or like, what is kind of your path in that? Yeah. So I started, um, I've been kind of through the ringer. So a um, little bit out of college, a couple of years, I started uh, like a podcast, a Bears podcast. And I did Bears podcasting, I want to say from like 2019 all the way to like 2022, 23, early 23, maybe. Um, I had a great time doing it. In the middle, I like, we had this brawl network, if you ever heard of it, uh, with somebody who just wasn't really a good guy and it kind of fell through. But like, mm -hmm. I mean, we had 110 people. We had a bunch of people writing for us. We had 30 podcasts. Like this thing was like big. It was really cool. Yeah, yeah. We had some sponsors. So that was cool to like be a part of. And then. I had this bear pod bears podcast where like I interviewed like Jim McMahon, Devin Hester, uh, Charles Leno. Uh, I had Max Crosby on when he was at Eastern Michigan and still coming up, up like 
I had, I had a really cool experience interviewing all these, like all these guys. And eventually like it kind of just got to the point and, you know, I was tweeting out inside info too, but I got to the point where I was like, um, I don't know. I'm kind of tired of this. Like, I, I, you know, eventually like, Hey, I got like work and stuff going on. So I would say the last like year and a half, we kind of like, I put the podcast aside. I do a fun challenge reality TV one with my buddy from yeah. Pennsylvania, but um, I kind of like was out of doing the bear stuff. It's just a lot of work and it's, um, you know, it, it's just, it's just a lot to do as you know, you have, you know, you have this show as well. So it's a lot of work and, yeah. you know, eventually I think I got burnt out with the, all the networks and getting screwed a couple times and that kind of stuff. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to kind of like just be on Twitter and like, there's a lot of people I formed relationships with. So I'm like, I want to see the bears be, be good and like celebrate that with the people that I've developed relationships with. And then, you know, tweet out the inside info, just kind of take it um day by day and have fun with it um if anything comes of it like if somebody dms me about something or whatever like may, you know maybe i think that's really cool but um yeah i kind of put like the shows and other stuff like that on the side it was a fun thing i did for a couple of years and now it's kind of like oh just kind of on twitter for fun yeah it was it's so funny bro like i saw that you had the challenge pod and uh, i was talking to my girlfriend earlier today just about uh, what i what i had going on today i told her i was talking to you and uh she loves the challenge. So she was like, Oh, yeah. that's so raw that you do this and the, the <laughs> football shit. So, um, kind of next question I kind of have for you is we can just kind of get into bears talk. Um, sure. what do you think the bears really should do at nine? Like what direction are you leaning? I know it's probably like OT wide receiver D line. I know everyone's got their own opinion, but yeah, I think the, uh, I, I think the ideal situation for Bears fans all around is like wide receiver, right? So, so I think I've seen I, uh, tweets out there that's like, oh, moving up to five would take a second round pick and like the ninth pick, obviously. Like a second round pick in 2025 and, and the ninth. And I think that's super enticing. Uh, and I think, um, you know, it's something that Paul should explore. Because like I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is – I think he's like generational and I think he's going to be very good. And if you have a chance to go get him, I think you go get, get him. And that's like the flashy picks. I think at the end of the day, it's going to be like verse or Murphy, yeah. which you could potentially trade back and get picks and still get one of those two guys. Um, I think those would be, I'd be just as fine with those picks. There's an interesting, I was talking to my buddy, uh, Luke Barry, who does the believe in monsters podcast. Um, and for specifically for bears. And he was actually talking to me about like, investing in a in a first round wide receiver doesn't pan out most of the time you you if you look at the highest paid wide receivers today like one of them is i think it was calvin ridley round. yeah and, yeah and the rest are like second to later yeah. Round guys. Yeah. yeah now now that said you still have you still have like garrett wilson chris olave which i'm pretty sure were first rounders yeah yeah right Your, wrong. Uh, olave gonna, was 11 yeah yeah they're gonna be they're gonna get money right so they're still on their rookie contracts but like the, you know you investing in maybe you know you might want to consider investing in other positions whereas you can get a better wide receiver maybe later in the round like that number two guy from lsu i think uh brian thomas jr could, yeah he led yeah, the yeah. fbs he, he in be, touchdowns yeah yes yeah he could definitely be an option later um after the first round so i think it depends on on the risk ryan poles wants to take it really seems like he's like loading up on offense so i wouldn't be shocked i think we'd all love uh one of those top three wide receivers but i'd also wouldn't be surprised if they trade back a couple picks and go after uh, Burst or Murphy. I think Eberflus uh, is probably on the Verse train, if I had to guess. Yeah, I personally, in my opinion, I would want Verse or Latu over Turner if we're going to go the defensive yeah. line route just because of the 4-3. I mean, I think Turner is a little bit more of an outside linebacker in like a 3-4 scheme. Uh, maybe That's why I think he fits so well with the Falcons. I personally lean a little bit more towards wide receiver because, you know, if you want Caleb to develop, I understand we have Keenan Allen and DJ Moore, but I don't think Poles would have traded for Keenan Allen as a one-year rental um, if – you know, he doesn't plan on taking a receiver, but I also think, you know, polls, what I've seen with him in, in my opinion, is he always sets up safety nets, right? Like he has the two first round picks. So if Justin didn't move, uh, didn't plan out, he can move up and get the guy. Luckily he got the number one pick, so he doesn't have to do that. But when you look at the bears, it's, let's say they get Romo Dunze, then you have Romo Dunze and DJ Moore, and you don't have yeah. to pay Keenan Allen past this year. So I think drafting the position of wide receiver would, you know, kind of future proof, the bears and allow a rookie to develop with Caleb Williams, where if you go get a guy like verse or a guy like Latu, if the medicals don't scare you away, 
that's just an even more dominant D line. And I wouldn't be opposed to Byron Murphy either because then you have more push from the interior as well. So yeah, I don't think you can really go wrong with any of the picks here outside of like, yeah, I wouldn't want Olu. Yeah, no, hundred percent. It's loaded too. I think after, I forgot what, this per, I can't remember who said it, but like after one of the rounds, like the second or third round, there's a significant drop of talent yeah. in this draft. So it, I think it depends like where you see that, where we see the drop off in which position groups and then maybe go there at nine. I also voice the concern of like, Hey, if you're not, you know, if, if you're going to not going to draft a wide receiver early, like it, there are some concerns about what happens if Keenan Allen gets hurt. What happens right. if you don't sign Keenan Allen to an extension? Like what are you, what are you going to do there? So got Tyler Scott wide receiver three. So yeah. Whereas like, I don't think like next year's draft, like you're not going to have, you're likely not going to have three studs at the top. They're going to go top 10, like, like you do this year's draft. So, right. I, you know, it might be worth doing that and then exploring defensive line in the, in the other two, in, in the next like two rounds. I think also the thing is too, like you don't really expect to be picking in the top 10 for quite a while so it's almost like you want to grab the guy while you're there um but i do think if the wide receivers are off the board it's worth it to trade back i think first and and or lots who could be there around 15 um and i think you know the colts might be a prime trade back candidate i think they'd be willing to move up for bowers um just Mm -hmm. to give anthony richardson some more weapons but um you know caleb williams gonna probably need the number one pick um, how many games or seasons do you think it's going to take him to throw for more than Fields? Fields threw for 6,675 yards in 40 games. I'm thinking it's probably going to be like 30. He could do that in 30 games. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could say I could see it happening. In, oh man, it's going to. This might be a lot. This might be a, a hot take, but I'll, I'll say like 25, 22 to 25 games. Okay. Okay. Uh, so. Okay. I, I could see him putting up a over 3000 yard season this year. And then next year, I think he just explodes that if they were, if he was going to do that, he would just have to throw for 267 yards a game. It's really not yeah. that much. Like the bar is so low. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to see what Caleb can do. I mean, I haven't been more excited as a bears fan in quite a while. Um, yeah. with that being said, like it, let's say they get Caleb and they get a stud at nine. Let's, let's take away the trade out. What do you, after finishing like seven and 10 last year, Do you think there's a chance that they win 11 games this year? I mean, I'm thinking like 10 should really be their goal this year. Yeah, I think 10 or 11 is a good goal. They get the, uh, I'm trying to remember, they get the, do they get the last round schedule or third place schedule? Yes, so they get, they get a last place schedule this year. Last place schedule. Okay, yeah. So I think that'll benefit them. They play the commanders again, who I I know they beefed up a little bit, but I think they're just going to be like old and aging. (laughs) So I don't really you know, they, they had that last place schedule, and I think that's favorable for them. Going 7-9 and nine last year with injuries to fields and injuries to other key players, um, I think this year, like, you know, you completely changed the offense. Like, on paper, it is it is one of the top, top offenses, offenses in the NFL, and then you keep the NFL, the defense stagnant while continuing to, like, improve. So I, I think, like, 10 is the minimum. I'm really curious to see what the books have after Caleb's drafted – yeah. Uh, for the bears over under, but like, I mean, 10 games is, is the, is the bear bear minimum. Yeah. I think you kind of have to make the playoffs, especially in the <laughs> NFC where it's not super, super competitive. And I'm not saying there's not good teams. There definitely is, but it's not top heavy or it's not like super heavy, like the AFC where it's like almost anyone can make the playoffs except for the really bottom garbage teams. Yeah. Um, do you think, I don't know, like this is kind of, we can finish this up here, but I think a lot of the issue with people having the problem with trading fields and drafting Caleb is the idea that Eberflus is kind of in a hot seat season. But like after they brought him back, I was like, there's no way they're going to fire him after this year. So like barring like a disaster, do you think there's any chance that Flus is gone after this year? No, I mean, you have to take something pretty drastic for that to, for that to occur. Um, and again, I think at the point where if you look at the offense and you look at this generational prospect that you're bringing in, if this offense fails, I, I think it's past town. I think we're like legitimately like there's some kind of curse or yeah. some kind of vibes or something around the bears yeah. that just like, they sold never their soul in 85. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, this is like, you physically look at this 
this offense and you're like, you cannot not succeed. I don't really understand this. I mean, Brandon Staley obviously did a pretty bad job in the, in LA with the talent he had, but they still, you know, they still were decent. So you look at this much better offense and you have a, now a really good quarterback and you have a very solid defense, like a top 10 defense. Like if this doesn't work out, I really don't know, but I, I can't do another draft a quarterback um, three years, get a new quarterback, keep the head coach. Then you get rid of the head coach. Then a couple of years later, remove the quarterback, keep the head coach. I can't go through that cycle again. So I'm just hoping for the best. I think getting into Shane Waldron helps. I think, West Coast bringing in Caleb as well. I think uh, that that like marriage should work pretty well. Um, so I'm really on the boat of like, and I'm tr- I'm trying to be like cautiously optimistic because like our past it's not great. So I'm staying hopeful that you know this is they polls did such a phenomenal job setting this up that it is going to be very hard to see failure. Like I could I could, you can even make the case that ten wins is failure, but like you still get into the playoffs and it's Caleb's first season. So. Um, I don't see flus going anywhere after this year unless they just completely bottom out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I feel you. I mean, I would say polls has probably been the best GM the bears have had in quite a while. What yeah. hundred percent. This team it's, it's not even comparable to, you know, certain things and people get mad about his free agency moves, but you know, he's not handing out bad contracts. Like that's fine. Yes. The Claypool thing was a disaster. He's a young GM. He makes mistakes, whatever. Um, the Bears have never drafted a quarterback number one overall. They've had the number one overall picks twice, and I believe it was both used on running backs. I think the last time they had it was 57. So, yeah, if this doesn't work out, it's definitely going to be pretty crushing for an already, you know, depressed Bears nation who have not really accomplished what they've spo- – what they've really – have supposed to accomplished in the times that they've had good players on the roster. So, yeah. Look, looking forward to the future. Um, yeah, no, thank you so much for hopping on. Um, anything we can look forward to for the draft? Because I know you tweeted something out about that a couple days ago. Oh, yeah, we'll have scoops as, as usual. So, like, every year we usually try to find a really good value prop to bet on based off, like, info we're getting, which is pretty cool. So, like, we hit on uh, – was it Trey Lance that went three to the Niners a couple years ago? Um, so he, I think, is that what it is? Yeah. So Trey Lance went to the Niners. Everybody thought it was going to be Zach Wilson. Um, I might think of the right draft. Yeah. I think of the right draft. Right there in the same class. So everybody had Zach Wilson, I think going, no, Zach Wilson went two. You got to help yeah. me out here. I'm trying to remember. What so it was, it was T-Law, Zach Wilson, and then Trey Lance, Trey Lance right? and then Fields was 11 and Jones was 15. Okay. So Something, something. The the Niners pick third. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. So, God, this is like my mind's still scrambled. <laughs> um. So it was something with that third pick where Trey Lance to go to the Niners at the time was like plus four fifty. But my oh, guy wow. was texting me like, my guy was texting me like, hey, Trey Lance is going to the Niners, and I put it out there. I said, hey, Trey Lance, like, get on this now. And like, this was a week before the draft, and like, you see all these conflicting reports, and we get to the draft. Trey Lance went to the Niners, and like, everybody cashed. Last year, um, I forgot who it was, but it was another plus money. And literally within two days, he was like minus a thousand to go with the pick that oh, we had. Wow. So we always look for stuff like that, which is pretty fun. Um, and then like usually if you want, if you don't want spoilers, you should mute my account. Cause usually we do, I'll do like the top 10 probably after that, it, you know, I don't really care, but my buddy usually text me, text me picks before uh, Goodell gets out on the, on the stand and, and says them. Uh, like for example, and the and trades too. So for example, uh, when the Bears traded up to eleven to get Fields, um, my buddy texted me and said, "Oh, the Gi- Giants are trading," and I tweeted, "The Giants are trading." And he goes, uh, "With the Bears." I was like, and then you see the next day, I framed these two tweets because yeah. it was so funny. And it was like, "Oh my God, it's the Bears!" And then Justin Fields because I was so pumped with Fields, so I had oh, like, this picture. I was too. losing my mind. <laughs> Yeah, that was crazy. I was like, no fucking way. So that was uh, that was very cool. So yeah, we'll we'll have like nuggets and fun things like that. And then anything probably a couple of days leading up to the draft, we'll also like put out too if, if anything comes up. So definitely excited. It's always a great time of year. Yeah, no, I'm very excited. 14 days. Um, yeah. I'll probably post this video tomorrow, so 13 days. But uh, yeah, no, thanks so much for hopping on. You want to let people know where they can find you on Twitter? Yeah, just bad take fugues, F-U-G-E-S on Twitter. Yeah, I'll have that in description as well, but thank you so much, Austin. I appreciate it.
Appreciate it. No problem.